Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond, welcome back to another YouTube video, and this video will showcase day 22 of TriHackMe's advent of cyber. So I am logged into TriHackMe, I have joined the room, and I have spun up the VPN, or virtual private network, so I can connect to their material and their network, and I've also deployed and spun up the machine for today's task, and I've started the attack box over here on the right hand side. So I'm ready to dive in, uh, you should make sure that you have all those steps completed just as well as you always do with TriHackMe so we can get started here. So I will try my darndest to zoom in here so we can make this readable and legible. Actually something you can see for you, um, but it might kind of muff up the attack box. So we'll see how we do, but uh, let's get started. This is day 22 titled Elf McEager Becomes Cyber Elf. It says, the past few days, there have been some strange things happening at the Best Festival Company. McEager hasn't had the time to fully investigate the compromise endpoints with everything that's going on, nor does he have time to re-image the workstations. McEager decides to log into a different workstation, one of his backup systems. McEager logs in, and to his dismay, he can't log in due to his password manager. Or he can't log in to his password manager. It's not accepting his master key. He notices that the folder name has been renamed to something strange. So for our task, you must gain access to the password manager and decode the values within the password manager using CyberChef. Okay, CyberChef is a good tool. CyberChef is great. We've seen it probably before in some other videos, some other tasks, but it is a great skill and good to kind of uh, focus in on, zoom in on for, for today's activity. So we can use the attack box and Remina to connect to this ma remote machine. Make sure the remote machine is deployed before proceeding, and I have deployed it. That's this big green deploy button up top. And we can click on the plus icon as shown below within Remina. So I will do that. Uh, if you navigate within your attack box up to applications, Remina is under the internet submenu, and you can click on that here. Now, if we need to create a new profile for this like target or what we're going to connect to, we do have to create this and click on this plus sign here. Now, once we've opened up the remote desktop preferences, we can type in the server and username and password and everything. The server is going to end up being the IP address of the deployed remote machine. So my IP address is 10, 10, 21, 179, but yours will be different. So take note as to what this paragraph says here and note your IP address for your specific remote machine. I'll type that in, 10, 10, 21, 179. The username is administrator, and the user password is snowflakes with some leet speak, a zero for the O, capital F, and an exclamation point for an L with three exclamation points following. So I'll go ahead and enter that. Administrator and snow zero, capital F, exclamation point, aches. <laughs> One, two, three exclamation points. And the very, very last step, if we are doing this within the attack box, we do need to specify the color depth. So by default, it's going to be set to this GFX, AVC, whatever. Uh, we actually need to bring that down to remote effects because we're doing this through the attack box. I don't think you need to tweak that if you're doing it kind of from your own Remina or whatever RDP client you might be using. Um, but that is a specific setting that I know we need to do through the attack box. Worth tinkering around though, if it's giving you trouble when you're doing it in a different method. And we can go ahead and click connect. Uh, my face is in the way, but if you do click on this connect button, it should connect. It will prompt you for a certificate excuse me, a certificate. It'll ask, hey, are you comfortable and do you accept the certificate? And we can go ahead and do that because we're trusting this here. And then we should start to log in with RDP. Take note, however, the virtual machine may take up to three minutes to load and doing this through the attack box, things might be a little bit slower than you might be used to. Um, it just the nature of the beast. It just comes with the territory, but uh, we can keep reading on while this loads up. It says, password managers are the norm these days. And looks like I do already have KeyPass open and ready for me here. So I'll minimize that. And we'll kind of get, get started back from the get-go. Here's our loaded desktop. But 
Password managers are the norm these days. There are many cloud-based pass excuse me, cloud-based password managers, but there are also password managers you can run locally on your endpoint, such as KeePass. Uh, cloud-based password managers, I am a big fan of LastPass. I use that all the time, every day for my life. So um, thumbs up there. <laughs> Shout out to LastPass. KeePass is an executable that allows you to store all types of data, including passwords, in a password-protected database. The official definition of KeePass from its website says, Today, you have to remember many passwords. You need a password for a lot of websites, your email account, your web server, network logins, etc. This list is endless. Also, you should use a different password for each account. Because if you would only use one password everywhere, and then if someone gets this password, you have a problem. The thief would have access to all of your accounts. KeePass is a free open source password manager, which helps you to manage your passwords in a secure way. You can store all of your passwords in one database, which is locked with a master key. So you only have to remember one single master key to unlock the whole database. Now with that out of the way, open the strange looking folder name on the desktop and run KeePass. You'll be prompted to enter the master password. If you enter the phrase McEager Rockstar, you'll see a message stating that that key is invalid. So let's go ahead and do that. Have that folder open and it has some strange name with lots of random letters and numbers and nonsense and a couple equal signs there at the end. But I do see key pass is present. So I'll double click on that and I can see it opened just barely on the side of my screen. Uh, I'll try and move this forward or into the into the view that you can see here, but there should be another window that comes with it prompting me for a password. Maybe I will just close this and reopen it. Let's see how we do. There we go. Now we have this prompt to enter the master key. So I could enter that McEager Rockstar. I'll hit OK. But that will tell me, oh, the composite key is invalid. Make sure the composite key is correct and try again. So that failed. That was not the correct password. Looking back at the folder name, it looks cryptic, like some sort of encoding. Encryption and encoding are familiar techniques used in IT, especially within computer security. Malware writers use some of these encoding techniques to hide their malicious code. Some encodings are quickly identifiable and some are not. You can use CyberChef to decrypt or decode the encrypted or encoded values that you might encounter within this task and endpoint. CyberChef is the self-purported cyber Swiss army knife created by GCHQ. It is a fantastic tool for data transformation, extraction, and manipulation in your web browser. CyberChef uses recipes to perform this magic. Speaking of magic, you can use the magic recipe to decode the folder name. There is a local copy of CyberChef within C colon backslash tools on the endpoint. Um, I have tried to move over to this and run it, although again, it does seem to be a little bit slow for me. You're struggling within Google Chrome within the attack box through RDP. So I'm going to play it safe and use CyberChef through my real browser that I'm connected to try hack me with. Uh, so I might end up disc jockeying or toggling back and forth between open tabs, but hopefully I can still keep it sane and you guys can follow along. Anyway, we want to grab this strange looking folder name here, but we kind of need to be able to copy and paste that and pull it out of the attack box. Uh, what I can do is actually double click in sort of the location bar with an explorer. And then if I sort of get into a text entry, I can select and move around and actually grab, highlight this strange folder name, DGH, maybe that's an I or an L or a one, Z, three, J, B, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to right click and copy that. And then within the attack box, I have this sort of ribbon banner here and I can click on that clipboard icon to grab the copy of that clipboard value. Perfect. But let's keep reading. We can use this magic recipe. To use a recipe, simply drag it into the recipe window that's typically in the middle of the CyberChef display. Auto bake should be checked, of which will automatically run the recipe against the encoded value. And we'll put that encoded value up on the top right where it says input. If it's not checked, you can simply press bake. Now that you have unlocked KeePass, you should see that there are more encodings within the KeePass database file. Take a close look at the notes entry for each value. They will provide clues on how to decode them. 
Some of the popular encodings are listed under favorites. To review or view the password entries, click on the ellipsis. Malware writers perform various iterations of encodings to frustrate the reverse engineering process. With that being said, one of the encoded values will require you to run the duplicate recipe two times to get the fully decoded value. Okay, so looks like that's all the reading that we have to do, but now we have all of the good tasks and questions that we need to answer. So I will hop on over to CyberChef, which I have in a different tab here, but I can just slap and paste in this encoded value for that strange folder name and put that in the input panel up on the top right. Now in the operations, I could do any of these kind of options and things that CyberChef could offer me. There are a ton of different tools, techniques, things you could do here. Um, what we will try to do is simply just search for what we're looking for. And we know that for this first operation, we want to run the magic function. So we could hold this, drag it over into that recipes pane. And then when we let it go, we do see some, okay, great potential victory down here in the output panel. I see from base 64 as one potential recipe and the resulting snippet is the Grinch was here. So that looks suspicious and that may very well be our actual master key to unlock this key pass database. So base64 must have been the operation that we ran, but we're taking it from base64. So we are base64 decoding this. And I'm sure a lot of you that like to keep up with this stuff probably already identified that, right? Those equals signs at the very, very end, those are used for padding in base64. So base64, the encoded representation always has to have a multiple of four in length. So it'll use equal signs to pad or tack on to the end to reach that length criteria. So you'll also kind of get a familiarity or you'll, you'll gain an eye for noticing the random assortment of letters and capital letters, lowercase letters and numbers. And you could probably quick and easy just glance at it and say, oh, that's base 64. So we could decode that value and we got the Grinch was here. So I will hop back over to our attack box here and I'll try and scroll down in this RDP window so I can get back to key pass. Now within key pass for the master password, I can try and type in the Grinch was here. And I can hit okay. Oh, and there we go. It looks like it opened up the password database. So I see Haya as an entry in here in private, which is interesting. And uh, I guess we can use that to answer this first question here. The Grinch was here and we can submit this. There we go. What was the hint? What would that would have been? Okay, look under the result snippet. Yep, we saw that within CyberChef. What is the encoding method listed as the matching ops? Ooh, is that, oh, 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 okay. Under the properties, my face is still once again in the way, but uh, matching ops from base64, looks like that's what we need for the answer here. Base64 must be what it's referring to. The encoding method is base64. Submit that, and there we go. Okay, another correct answer. What is the decoded password value of the ELF server? Ooh, we'll get back to our key pass database, but I don't see ELF server currently listed under this private menu here. So let's go into general, nothing there. Um, Windows, does that load? No. Network, there it is. Okay, network has ELF server. So just poking around, just exploring. And if I were to kind of move these columns here so I can see a little bit more, username is elf admin. The password is included here. It has a URL. And oh, there are some notes here extra steps to decrypt. Okay, so I'm going to double click on that entry. And hopefully, I'll get a pop up. Fingers crossed. Hard to kind of bump around within this attack box zoomed in, right? Let's see if I can view that. There we go. Edit entry. Now I can see all the information for this and the notes here, it says extra steps. <laughs> Goodness, extra steps to decrypt. So let's view this password here. Right now it's just kind of denoted with the bullets, but if I click on this little icon for the bullets here, ellipsis, it'll show or hide the password. So now I can see, okay, password is Apparently, 736E3077, blah, blah, blah. But, 
according to this task here, according to this little puzzle and activity, that is not the real password. We actually have to do something else with it. So let's copy that out. I'll throw it in the clipboard and extract it sort of from the attack box. And now I will bring this into CyberChef. We could probably drop this into magic and it will just figure it out for us. There we go. It says, oh, we found it from Hex. The result snippet is snowman. Or if we knew, which we had the really good inclination that it's Hex, based off that Hextra steps to decrypt, we could go ahead and just type in Hex and select from Hex to decode it. There we go. And now our output is snowman. So I will copy that and I'll paste that in for that next question here. Hit submit and that is the correct answer. Okay, so we are cruising through this. Now we need to know the decoded password value for elf mail. Well, we'll get back to our attack box and we'll close out of this edit entry. Now we probably need to hop over to this email option here. Okay, and I see elf mail listed here. Uh, let's double click on this. Oh, and we got a lot of stuff here. The note says entities. And if I toggle the show or hide password, we have this long ginormous string. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's do some deductive reasoning. If I were to pull this out and bring it to CyberChef, I could, just as we did before, paste this into the input panel and then search for what we might be clued into. Okay, entities. Mm, that's got to be an HTML entity. And that makes sense, right? We can see the kind of the ampersand and then the little pound symbol, number sign, octothorpe hashtag. <laughs> that will allow us to include a specific kind of key or character like within HTML. So let's drag that in from HTML entities to decode it. And there we go. Okay, the password looks to be ice skating in some leet speak. So that was nice and easy. Let's paste that in and submit that for the decoded password value of elf mail. We can submit that answer and that is also correct. Okay, now we need to decode the last encoded value. Hmm, let's go find that last password here. I'll close this out. I'll move into home banking and there's nothing there. Oh, we didn't check internet. No, nothing there either. Uh, we can look in the recycle bin. Ooh. There's ELF security system. I'll double click on that. And this has a large note. <laughs> There's a lot of nonsense in here. What is that password here? Nothing here. Fantastic. We don't have a whole lot to go off of then. I guess we have this eval string from character code information though. So I'm going to hit control A on my keyboard to copy all that. And I'll pull it out from the attack box clipboard. There we go. Now I've got access to it and I can bring it into CyberChef, but what do I really do with this thing? I'll paste it in to the input and I'll try and make some sense of it. So all these numbers look like ASCII. They look like um, potential character codes or representations for an ASCII number represented in decimal, right? Base 10. And this eval um, and string dot from character code, that looks like JavaScript. So maybe potentially we could just toss this into like our JavaScript window or, or our console and have it run and execute. But, but eval is literally going to execute code. So if we get this from another location, maybe not try hack me that we know we do trust. If we were to receive this from someplace we don't trust, we probably don't want to run that code unless it comes from, or unless we're running it in like a lockdown and closed network app virtual machine or something. It's not connected to the internet um, because who knows, maybe there could be real malware or evil badness in that. Uh, and we wouldn't know, right? Because we haven't decoded this. So that's what the task is getting at when it's telling us these malware authors are using techniques like this to frustrate the reverse engineering process and make it look something that we can't understand at first glance, right? It's not human readable until we deobfuscate it or decode it or like reverse engineer, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um, that was a lot of talk. Let's go do this thing. Let's remove that recipe that we had in the middle and then let's try and get a better idea as to what this might be. I want to just take a peek at the hint because TryHackMe is super duper generous and is willing to help us learn. 
So let's take a look at that hint. It says add the from character code recipe twice. The comma is a limiter in the base of 10. Hmm. Okay. So character code? From character code. That makes sense. That looks like it's kind of exactly what we're seeing here. Eval from character code. Let's drag that in. Ooh, but that looks like a lot of nonsense right over here. Oh, 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 we need to modify these settings, right? Because these numbers, these, these character codes, right? These ASCII values and decimal, those are separated by a comma with a delimiter and they are in base 10, not base 16. Base 16 would be hex. So let's tweak that to base 10. Ooh, and now we have something a little bit more interesting. Looks like we have R something, blah, blah, blah. But there's more string from character code in here. So we aren't out of the woods yet. Looks like we have to run that procedure one more time. So let's drag in that from character code recipe again. And don't forget, we have to change the delimiter and the base here. Ooh, now we have a, a GitHub gist. Okay, let's go, I guess, visit that location. I will open up Firefox and throw it into my web browser once it pops up here. And then now that we kind of know that this isn't anything harmful or malicious, we could probably try and go ahead and run this from our console. But there we go. Okay, looks like we have a flag here. THM and some hexadecimal values for uh, the cyber elf task. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Let's go ahead and submit that as the flag. And there we go. That's it. All right. We have finished day 22, that task working through CyberChef, kind of exploring different encodings and getting our hands on with a key pass database. That was super cool. That was kind of fun. I think that was a, I don't know, a fun little activity to learn a little bit more about some encoding and some good stuff. Um, just for funsies, right? Because, you know, we like to do a little extracurricular, right? Let's take that big, long character encoding from this super elf admin last tab here um, and let's grab it from our clipboard and then let's try and run it in our developer console and like through with javascript right so i'm gonna open up a new tab and i'll hit f12 on my keyboard here and i'm moving into the console application or the console tab now within our browser's developer tools right so i could be able to tinker and play with javascript so i'm gonna go ahead and paste in all of that code, that eval string from character code. And again, I mentioned this before, you probably wouldn't want to do this unless you were kind of already knowing or aware of what the code is behind that to see how JavaScript would handle it and what it would do. Or run it in an enclosed contained environment, no access to the internet, etc. Just in case it is potentially harmful or malware. So let's turn the crank on this. I'm going to hit enter. And oh... Uncaught eval error refused to evaluate a string as JavaScript because unsafe eval is not allowed as a source script in the following content. Ooh, 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 ooh. So uh, Chrome wouldn't even let us do it. <laughs> That's funny. Can um, can we do it in like a terminal? Like if I have Node, Node.js, I don't think I have Node installed on... Oh, I do. Oh, heck yeah. Okay, well then let's just bump around. Um, I'll exit this and I will create a text file or like a, a, our own JavaScript file to run. Um, again, this is also probably concerning because you might not want to do this on uh, <laughs> like on your own local system, like running it with Node or, or a local copy of JavaScript. So let's do a, a text.js. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> and I'll paste all this in and you can see I have that big long thing. And I guess I'll put a console.log at the very, very front of this, uh, just so I can see it actually display out on the screen what it's doing and what it's, what it's evaluating to, et cetera, et cetera. So let's try and run that with node and see what it does. Text.js, oof, document is undefined. Okay, probably that's gotta be the next layer, right? Um, and document because we aren't working through the web browser. We are doing this through node, that's not going to work. But we can see the code or the command that it tried to run. So this is the second layer kind of of the onion that we saw earlier. So we could take note of that again as like, um, second.js and just slap this in. And then let's again, 
display this here, but we can't run it because of the document create element. So let's look for any occurrence of document and try to not do it. <laughs> like, let's just not bother. Although that might end up breaking things because I'm sure we need some of those. So that technique probably wouldn't work, but maybe within Firefox or something, we could run all this. I'm having too much fun, guys. We should stop. <laughs> the video is practically over. Let's try and copy that eval and run it within Firefox. So now I've got my developer tools open. Again, I hit F12 there and let's zoom in the console so you can see it. We have to allow pasting. There we go. And now I can paste this in and the content security policy, that page still won't let us do it. What if I was in CyberChef? Let's go to, let's Google CyberChef. Will it let me do it there? I'll drag up the developer tools. Look one more time. Ooh, there we go. Wait, what did we get here? What is this? Loading failed for the script with source h https just github.com heaven rise. Huh. Okay. So like it made the script tag but it didn't include the location that we expected or at least that we saw earlier when we ran this through ourselves. But it also has a weird h extra letter in the HTTPS schema. It just brings us to heaven Riza. If we go to that, can we find that cyber elf secret? I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. That works. Well, that was silly and cheesy and fun. Forgive me for kind of going down that rabbit hole, but I wanted to see what JavaScript could, could piece together if we just let it run with it. So that's that. Um, Anyway, I didn't mean to be tinkering and playing it when we had to, we got to keep it real, keep it professional, right? Keep it straight into the point. I'm just kidding. But we did it. We did it. That is the end of day 22. That is the end of this task for Trihackme's advent of cyber. And I had fun. I hope you had fun too. Um, kudos and thank you, of course. Give credit where credit is due to the incredible challenge authors over there at Trihackme doing all this stuff, making 25 of these things for the whole month of December. And kudos and thank you to you for playing along, for watching these, for uh, learning and that's and having fun. That's what's important here. So we are, of course, getting closer to the holidays. So if you're celebrating Christmas, you're celebrating anything, you're spending time with your friends and family and your loved ones, please, please enjoy. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, relax. Take some time to chill and, and you know, unwind because we're going to jump into action right after that. But Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.